wonder what this is. What a nice Thanksgiving. Thank goodness Dr. Romano won't be working Thanksgiving Day. But it looks like he's been here. SN2, SN1, E2. Ah, oh, I'm gonna go take a break. Uh-oh, Dr. Romano, I thought you'd be taking the day off. There's really no such thing as a day off, so why don't we just get to work and I'll show you a couple of great mechanism questions. Dr. Romano, I haven't eaten my dinner yet. That's okay, you can wait. Let's get to the chemistry. Okay, um, I want you to look at four types of questions that you're gonna see on the DAT exam that I think are extremely important. In the first example, you have a secondary halide. Now, I'm hoping you can see that this is the R configuration. So I'll put an R here. We have an R configuration. Now, I want you to focus on the nucleophile. It says NaSCH3. Anytime you see a sulfur in organic chemistry, you're going to never forget. It loves to do the SN2 reaction. Now, instead of sulfur, I could have also wrote it as NaCN. So notice you've got two different reactions, or two different nucleophiles, NaCN or NaSCH3, and the solvent is written down here, it's called the polar A product solvent. Now, in an SN2, we're gonna knock out the leaving group, and we're gonna replace it with the nucleophile. So as you can see, the R group, or the bromine group here, has been replaced with an SCH3, or if you would have used NaCN, you would have replaced it with a cyanide group. Now notice the key thing. You would have gone from an R, and both of these have the configuration of S. So we did an inversion. We did an inversion in the SN2 reaction because we attacked it from the back side. If you look at example number B now, which I think is a tricky question, you have a secondary halide there's no cyanide, there's no sulfur, you just got a weak nucleophile like an alcohol. And it's polar proto conditions. Now, in a situation like this, this is going to be an SN1. Anytime there's an SN1, as you know, you form a carbocation. And I hope you realize that a carbocation could rearrange. And that's exactly what we get here, is we form the carbocation, the hydrogen from this carbon here moves over to give the carbocation, and then the nucleophile simply attacks it. In this example, this is an SN1 process, and you want to be very careful anytime there's an SN1 for a possible rearrangement or a shift. In let us see, you have a secondary halide, and in the secondary halide, you're going to treat this with sodium, ethoxide, and ethanol, which is the favorite reagents of the death. Instead of sodium, methoxide, and ethanol, it could have been sodium, methoxide, and methanol. Either way, this is a very powerful base, and because it's a powerful base, you're going to get an elimination reaction. As you can see what I've done here, I moved to the inside to form the most substituted alkene, and this is what we call the E2 Zeitseff product. The most substituted alkene is the more stable alkene. If the base was bigger and bulkier, you would have got what we call the E2 Hoffman product. This would have been the E2 Hoffman product if you would have treated it with something like T-butoxide or d -bu. And finally, the last one, we have a tertiary. Now, you've got to be very careful when you see a tertiary because tertiary can either do SN1 or E1. In this example, a tertiary I give you methanol, which is a weak nucleophile, it's going to go SN1. You form a carbocation, you do the attack, and you form an SN1. Here, you do an E1 because it's a tertiary, but you put heat underneath it. Anytime you put heat underneath it, you would have a competition between SN1 and E1. And E1 almost always wins if you got a tertiary with heat. So you have to be a little careful of that. In my Dad Destroy a study group on Facebook, I do many examples of this. And I'll have many examples, so I'm hoping you all join the group, and we'll take it from there if you got any further questions on it. But I hope this gave you a good idea what to do on these four processes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Romano. I'm going to go uh, take a rest now. Is that okay? Bye-bye. Okay? Goodbye.
Good day to you, sir.